Walking in a straight line, that's not really her style. Got the same heartbeat, but hers is falling behind. Nothing in this world could ever bring them down. Yeah, they're invincible. She's just in the background And she says I wish that I could be like the cool kids Cause all the cool kids They seem to fit in I wish that I could be like the cool kids Like the cool kids How you doing, Justin? Here today we are checking out "Cool Kids" by Echo Smith, a really fantastic song for beginners because it can start real simple, but there's lots of fun things you can add in along the way. Alternative chord grips, there's a cool riff in the verse, and adding in that little melody line as well, the instrumental bit. Let's get stuck in. Start with the basics. To play along with the original recording, you need capo there at the first fret. But good news, chords are super simple for the whole thing. It is E minor for one bar, C for one bar. G for one bar and D for one bar. We're going to look at some fancy versions, but that's the starting point. Two, three, four, C, two, three, four, G, two, three, four, D, two, D. She sees him walking in a straight line. That's not really her G, D. And they all E minor, the same heartbeat. C but hers is falling B, G, D And I wish that I could see like the cool kids G All the cool kids D seems to fit in E minor could be could see like the cool kids G Like the cool D It is the same sequence there all of the way through Now if you're a beginner and you're just getting to grips with those chords, then I'd recommend just starting off with that. Always the best thing I think to do is to be able to play along with the original recording or a back and track and play just a single strum on beat one. So literally go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Song like this, lots of different patterns that could work. But, you know, old faithful, down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. Up down works real good. I can be like the cool kids, cause all the cool kids they seem to fit in. Now, one thing that you do want to do with a song like this, where the chord progression is the same all of the way through, is do something different in the verses and the choruses, otherwise, it gets real samey. For this sort of song, actually just doing the single strum works real good. So for having all of the verses, she sees walking in a straight line, that's not really her style. Just keeping it that simple, definitely. Got the same heartbeat, but hers has fallen behind. If you can, try and keep your hair moving so you're in the groove. Nothing in this world could ever bring them down. Maybe add it a little bit more the, toward the end of the verse. Invincible, cause she's just in the background. And she says, I wish that I could be like the cool kids. You can see when you change that pattern up there for the chorus, it, it really lifts. So even as a beginner, it's a good idea to kind of get used to this idea of having a dynamic change between the verses and the choruses because it makes a huge difference. Now, on the original recording, they are doing just that. There's like a little riff, lots of space in the verses. I think it sounds really good. Nice, very nice parts, uh, cool little chord ideas, which I'll show you now. It's a little bit tricky to sing it and play at the same time. I had to admit I had to practice that a few times being able to do the riff, but there's nothing to say if you're doing a cover that you have to do the riff with exactly that rhythm. You might decide to change it up or whatever. That's completely up to you. So let me take you through now uh, the riff from the record, and I'll talk a couple of different options through that as well. <laughs> That's 
the riff for the verses. So it's like a little power chord here. This is an F power chord. Uh, because of the capo, it's sounding like an E minor. It's kind of an E minor chord, but we're up at the eighth fret if we're playing it with a capo. On, if you were playing it without a capo, then you'd have to move all of this stuff down one fret. Okay, so we're going eighth fret on the fifth string and tenth fret on the uh, fourth string. One and two, three, four and. It's the first bar on the E minor. One and two, three, four and. Now the next chord, which is a C sharp, I guess, in in actual pitch, but again because of the capo, this is the C chord. Actually, leaving his little finger up here on the sixth. Uh, that's a little bit stretchy. Uh, rhythm's the same. One and two, three, four, and one and two, three, four, and. If you find that stretch too hard, there's a couple of different options. Uh, when I was first uh, learning this myself, I was doing it here, doing ninth fret on the thicker string, and the eighth fret on the fourth string. Same notes. But I've seen a video of uh, the guitar player whose name I don't know. Actually, I need to look that up. Uh, he's playing it that way. So it's up to you if you want to go for the big stretch or you want to do it that way. If you're really struggling with either of those, you could just play a regular fifth chord, C5 power chord with those notes. So, okay. You know, nothing wrong with doing that if you, if you need to simplify it, but that would be the original one. So one and two three, four, and one, and two, three, four, and one, and two, three, four, and one, two, three. Then it's just four, and one, and this is now on, a, well, it's a G sharp, technically, I guess, but it's a G chord because it's three frets above, above the capo. One, and two, three, four, and one, and two, three, and four, and it's just this little four to six fret there just to tail the riff and loop it around. So the whole thing together, three, four, one and two, three, four and one and two, three, four and one and two, three, four and one and two, three and four and one and two, three, four and one and two, three, four and one and two, three, four and one and two, three and four and one and two. Four, or there's the alternative there. Bit of a jump then afterwards. There's a few really nice alternative chord grips that you can use in this song that add a little bit of character to it. So let's go through and check them out. The first chord is an E minor. Probably don't want to start going too crazy because it's good grounding to have a nice, relatively simple chord to start off with. Second chord is a C. Now I quite like the sound of C with a G bass here like that the richness it gives the low end so instead of just regular C like that where you mute the thicker string you move your third finger onto the thicker string and put your little finger where your third finger was ends up being a C slash G so that can be a nice chord to work there another alternative that I think sounds nice in this song is C major 7 or you could play C over G with the major 7th as well if you want to add that bass note in, but I just think that note just seems to work really well. Just, it's nice. The, the G. Now, of course, there are loads of different approaches to G. You can do a rock G without the first finger, just three, uh, two and three, just three and four. This is a nice one as well, adding the second finger down. If you want a little bit more color. Nice one to, yeah, a little bit more punch to it. And the last chord, D. Now, there's a few options here. I quite like adding an F sharp bass note on there, just because you get that G. The movement of this going down to the E minor sounds pretty cool. You can refinger a D like that, put the bass note there with your first finger, but I always use my thumb. If you're a real beginner, you're probably going to find that a bit gnarly, but a really good one. A substitute for the D is taking your C chord and moving it up two frets. Really nice chord, particularly in this song. We have the E minor. Okay, 
so leave it it's just like a C leave the open G string the open third string and the open thinner string Okay, so you might want to have an experiment with some or all of those chords or any other chords that you know, any other substitutes. Definitely when you're doing a cover, I think it's a fun idea to try out some different chord grips to the original one and see if you can add your own personality onto the cover. If the point is you're playing it in a band, you want it just like the record, uh, definitely live, uh, the guitar player is playing some of these grips, the D particularly I can hear. Um, a couple of videos that I saw of him, because I've researched all these stuff and I'm a bit of a nerd, uh, it did look like he might have been playing in drop tuning as well, which was kind of interesting. Uh, so he might be playing this in drop D, which I haven't figured out, and I'm not going to go through that aspect in this lesson, but that might be something to explore as well, is just dropping the thicker string down a tone, particularly for, I'm going to show you the riff in a second, uh, and it kind of makes sense with the riff, you'll see. So, uh, yeah. Let's talk about the riff. The riff is the, the melody line that you hear played by the guitar and the synth a few times during the song. Uh, sounds like this. Okay, so we've got open E, thicker string, third fret, meaning three frets above the capo, open D string, second fret, two frets above the capo, open, second, open on the fifth string, and then the melody line is playing this D here, the, the open fourth string. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, one, two, three, 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 four. With a riff like this, I often like to try and integrate it into the strumming, because just on its own it sounds a little bit naked. So uh, if we're going to do that, a couple of things need to happen. First of all, you need to be super confident keeping your strumming hand moving consistently while you pick out other notes. This is not a beginner thing. It's going to take some practice, but you might like to have a try. So the trick will be thinking straight away that you're strumming while you're playing the riff. So going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So still keeping my hand moving, then thinking about the chords. changed so I'm still I'm thinking E minor I'm letting a few of the strings ring out C but I'm now playing the G bass note the melody note is definitely that D but it goes down so that's where I'm thinking like if you detuned I'm gonna have to think of this all very quickly so warts and all with probably some mistakes here we got uh, there's the G to the D now it kind of works okay but for me I still prefer the standard tuning and then hitting that low G bass note even though it's not the actual note on the riff but again if you're doing a cover of a tune if you're doing something like that feel free to experiment you should be experimenting trying different things seeing if you can make it your own definitely for beginners I would recommend just sticking with simple chords simple strumming playing the song along having some fun exploring the simple strumming and then a more complex strumming for the chorus maybe looking at the riff and I would add in that part last because it's definitely the hardest also be a nice thing to have a go at with two guitars if you've got a jam buddy somebody that you're working with they can play the riff you can play the chords and then swap it around lots of good fun to be had there in this song absolutely cracking uh, tune i can't believe that it came out so long ago and i've only just picked up on it uh, i think my daughter found it by asking for random stuff on alexa but uh yeah great tune hope you really enjoyed it plenty more beginner songs over on the website if you're struggling with the strum and you're struggling with the chords or any of that sort of stuff do go and check that out and remember as well my beginner song app uh, incredible uh, range of songs that you can play along with like guitar karaoke kind of stuff great for beginners really good for working on your timing and your strumming all the lessons are included with it as well so you might want to go and check that out uh, hopefully i'll see you for more lessons very soon take care of yourselves bye